What's up, peeps? I am from group six and I am Mergonet M. De La Serna. So I welcome you to Contracts Made Easy. So before uh, we discussed about articles 1330, articles 1331, and articles 1332 to articles 1334. And now we tackle 13. Articles 1335 and 1336. So first off is Articles 1335. It provides that there is violence when in order to press consent, uh, serious or irresistible force is employed. There is intimidation when one of the contracting parties is compelled by reasonable and well-grounded fear of an imminent and grave evil upon his person or property or upon the person or property of his spouse, descendants, or ascendants to give his consent. To determine the degree of intimidation, the age, sex, and condition of the person shall be borne in mind. A threat to enforce one's claim through competent authority, the claim is just or legal, does not vitiate consent. So from our previous discussions, Articles 31 to 1331 to 1334, we talked about the grounds which mistake will vitiate consent. In this article, uh, we will talk about violence or intimidation which will uh, vitiate consent. So first, what is the um, difference between violence and intimidation? First, violence uh, is a use of physical force or physical coercion. In other words, violence causes external damage. Intimidation, on the other hand, is a moral or mental coercion which causes internal damage and both results to vitiation when a party uses violence or intimidation to wrest consent from a party. So first, let's talk about uh, violence, which is the first paragraph. So the first paragraph states that there is violence when in order to wrest consent, there is serious or irresistible force is employed. So there are two requisites for violence to vitiate consent. So first, uh, there is employment of serious or irresistible force. And second, it is the reason why the contract was entered into. So to better understand this, let us have an example. So Quarta signed a document that he actually did not want to sign. Fission pointed a knife at his neck and slashed a bit of his skin, causing it to bleed. In here, there is a serious or irresistible force used by Twishan to wrest consent from Quarta because Quarta uh, is, is having a fear um, about his life. And because Quarta was forced to sign the document, although he physically signed it, the will uh, that made him sign the document is that of patients. Remember that there is a meeting of two minds between, uh, in a contract between the two persons. And in this example, uh, in actuality and by the realm of the law, there exists only one party and in the contract and therefore it is un, 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 unenforceable. And thus we go to intimidation. So what are the requisites of, it to, uh, of intimidation to vitiate consent? So this is provided by the second paragraph of the article. And it states that first, it must uh, produce a reasonable and well-grounded fear of an evil. So. What can we say that the fear is reasonable or well-grounded? So this is provided by the third paragraph or of the article. So it states that in the third paragraph, to determine the degree of intimidation, the age, sex, and condition of the person shall be borne in mind. So, but um, if you sign the contract, uh, 
out of rever reverential fear, meaning you sign the contract for fear of someone who has their respect and obedience due upon him, then the contract is valid because there is no actual threat uh, in this kind of situation. Two, uh, the evil must be imminent and grave. Third, the evil must be upon his person or property or that of his spouse, descendants, or ascendants. So intimidation here is not uh, exclusive to the person, but it also includes the relatives of the person who is forced, uh, who is forced to sign the contract. And fourth, it should be the reason why the party entered the contract. So if you sign the contract, um, even though you were not intimidated by the person, then it is not a vitiated contract, consent anymore. And fifth, uh, the threat must be of and just act. But there is an exception here. Uh, this, there is an exception to this requisite, which is the fourth paragraph of the article, in which it states that a threat to enforce one's claim through competent authority the claim is just or legal does not vitiate consent because um an example of this is this is practiced by creditors actually whose debtor has an uh an unpaid debt which is due and this does not vitiate consent because it is a just and legal claim and because this is within the realm of uh, of the law so for the last article in this video, we have Article 36. It provides that violence or intimidation shall annul the obligation, although it may have been employed by a third person who did not take part in the contract. So this article is really simple. Uh, it it is as what was stated violence or intimidation made by a party which means that the person is outside the contract rest consent they will rest consent to a contracting party then this will result to a to an annulment however the requisite the requisites of violence or intimidation as discussed by Article 1335 should be present here in order for the contract to be voidable or annulled. So that's all for this video. Thank you and stay tuned for more.